Worst case scenario, you end up sleeping outside for a couple of nights. Your family might get mad at you because I'm gonna instruct you to skip dinner now and then. Two super new studies, one from 2019, but one from just like a month ago, 2020, all right? All talking about shifting your eating window to the morning time. Now, if you're an intermittent faster, then you're probably adjusted to consuming most of your calories towards the end of the day, which is perfectly cool, and I'm totally okay with that, but every once in a while, there's a huge benefit to shifting it to the morning, which I've talked about in other things, but in this case, I wanna reveal some new science. So let's have some fun with this. I do wanna make sure you hit the red subscribe button, also the bell icon too, that way you never miss a beat. And then after this video, check out Thrive Market down below in the description. Online membership-based grocery store, super easy, super convenient. You can beat most of the grocery store prices with a lot of items and they get delivered right to your doorstep. So it's a win-win because you don't have to go to the grocery store. They have the healthy options you're looking for. It's just super easy and convenient. So highly recommend them, special link, down below in the description. Thank you Thrive Market for all the help throughout the years. So the first study I'm gonna talk about is the 2019 study. It's published in the acclaimed uh, journal Nutrients, a very famous journal. So this study took a look at an 18 hour fast, but this 18 hour fast was unique because the eating period was from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then the subjects fasted from 2 p.m. all the way to 8 a.m. So very different from what we normally see. Now the other group ate between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. So not as much fasting, but still a compressed eating window of 12 hours, which is better than most people. Well, what they found is that the group that fasted in the afternoon and evening ended up having a significantly higher expression of clock genes. That may not sound that exciting, okay? Who cares about clock genes? except for when we realize that our clock genes are what are regulating our circadian rhythm, and our circadian rhythm is what is ultimately going to regulate our metabolism. Now, when I get to the study from 2020, you'll see how this really plays a part. So the study found that after just four days of doing this, they had just almost a complete reset of their circadian rhythm. So yeah, I did a video talking about how this could be used as a tool to restore sleep, but I wanna focus on the metabolism. Now, if we're just consistently fasting throughout the day and then breaking our fast in the afternoon, evening, and having a bolus of calories in the afternoon and evening, if we do that over time, eventually we're sending kind of a mixed signal to our body, right? Because we have these two different circadian clocks that we have to manage. Our typical systemic circadian clock, which is kind of just understanding what 24 hours is and the hormone fluctuations that happen throughout the day, but also the cues, right? Eating is a cue that we are awake, okay? And that is going to turn on different hormonal and just enzymatic mechanisms within the body. When it's time to sleep, we should not be eating and not consuming. That's how our body knows it's the restorative mode. And that's how we have the increases in growth hormone, which can help our metabolism. That's how we have the increases in muscle that can help our metabolism, not to mention all the other hormonal cascades that happen as a result of those things, okay? So interestingly enough, shifting that eating period in the morning is going to make a big difference. And you don't have to do it all the time, okay? It's just something that you throw a wrench in your mix every now and then, and it's going to make a big difference. So I highly recommend doing that now. What about the other study? This is where it gets really fascinating. This one was published in November of 2020. So it's pretty darn new. It took a look at 82 women. This is so fascinating. Okay, 82 women that ate the exact same thing, but the only difference was that one group of women consumed their last meal between 7 and 7.30 p.m., and the other group consumed their last meal between 10.30 and 11 p.m. Okay, so they, both ate their meals in the evening, just one ate them. One group ate them a lot later, okay? So here's what's wild. They both lost weight because they were in a hypocaloric state, but the group that ate earlier lost almost five pounds more. Plus they had a bunch of other improved biomarkers, lower insulin, lower fasting glucose, better triglycerides, cholesterol, et cetera, you name it. What the heck's going on? Okay, well, it has to do, again, with sirtuins, which has to do with fasting, which we'll talk about in another video, but more so it has to do with that alignment of the circadian rhythm. Okay, the, the whole diurnal rhythm, the whole circadian rhythm got pushed back with the late eating group, meaning they weren't able to get into that state, meaning their body was left in absorptive energy utilization mode for longer. 
The other group had two, three, four hours more of restoration mode, and they're not having to be in that eating and storing mode. It's, it's that simple. It's black and white. You're eating, your body's awake. Your body is all about storing and doing what it needs to do. You might think that when you're resting and sleeping, you're storing, but you're not storing because you're not consuming food. Your body's not magically making fat from thin air at night. You are more likely to be burning fat at night than you are when you're eating during the day, okay? So we need to give our body an opportunity to do that. So this study just reinforces that shifting that eating period back a little bit is going to be beneficial. So here's a sample schedule that I would recommend doing. Okay, one or two days a week, try fasting through dinner. It's going to upset your family, but they'll be okay. In fact, maybe they'll do it with you. Okay, and then eat in the morning after your workout. So wake up in the morning, do your workout, and then break your fast at 8 a.m., eat all the way to 2 p.m., and then you can go ahead and start a fast again, and you can repeat the cycle and get back on track the next day, whatever. Okay, but then other days of the week, if you want to implement intermittent fasting, you can go ahead and break your fast at the normal 2 p.m., 3 p.m., but I would recommend that you cut off your eating when the sun goes down, okay? That way, you're not mix matching those two circadian systems that we have to pay attention to, and you're allowing your body to still maintain the integrity and the benefit that you got from the other form of fasting. This is going to potentially make an effect on your metabolism, but I think more importantly, you're going to feel more alive and you're gonna feel more in line with your natural clocks and natural rhythms, which therefore is going to make you make better choices and make you work out with the higher intensity that you want. Anyhow, as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and always be forward thinking and looking outside the box. I'll see you tomorrow.